and welcome to another episode of Pickway County Virtual Ag Days. I'm Katarina Sharp from the Pickway Soil and Water Conservation District and today we are out in the field with Alyssa Esman, her dad Don Lamb, and his brother-in-law Kent Harden learning about soybeans. Hi, I'm Alyssa Esman. I'm a weed science researcher at The Ohio State University. I study cover crops for weed control, looking at cover crops as a form of integrated pest management to help us reduce our weed pressure. I grew up right here in Circleville, Ohio, a short 40 minutes south of Columbus, Ohio, and I chose Ohio State because it has a great agricultural program and it has the city feel but with people you know and trust. My name's Don Lamb. Our family has a small farming operation. We also have a fertilizer, chemical, and seed dealership. Been involved in agriculture all my life. Here today to talk to you a little bit about uh, soybean harvest and what we do when we harvest soybeans. Probably 25 years that I've been actively farming. Went to the Ohio State University. I graduated with a degree in ag economics. Uh, after school was a, uh, involved with the USDA for about 25 years. Um, also involved with the farm and our, our family fertilizer dealership. We grow primarily corn and soybeans. That, those are our two primary crops. My name is Ken Harden. I work for the Evolution Ag, which is the local, local Case Ice dealership. I've done that for 13 years. Uh, I'm involved in this farm operation, so I do help and plant the crops for them in the off season. I attended Ohio State University in agriculture, also completed at Purdue Ag Short Course back in the early 80s. Um, like my dad was a veterinarian, so I was, I've been involved in the ag all my life. Two of the most popular crops grown in Ohio are corn and soybeans. Both of these products are very versatile and can be used in a number of different goods, um, but they're also very suitable to the climate and we have market and infrastructure set up in Ohio uh, prepared to support these commodities. So growing soybeans involves a lot of decisions. One of the big decisions is what kind of soybeans the producers are going to plant, as well as how they're going to manage their soil, what kind of crop protection they're going to use. So the soybeans in the spring will oftentimes look like this. Um, the pink coating is a treatment that the farmers will put on to the seed or purchase seed that looks like this to act as a protectant against bugs and um, diseases. And then in the fall when the beans are harvested, they'll look like this. So planting for a soybean crop starts long before the springtime. Uh, in the winter, farmers will often spend time cleaning their equipment, making repairs from the previous year, uh, and making plants. So they have to pick out what kind of seed they want, what their crop management plan will be, uh, how they're going to manage the soil, things like that. Uh, once the warm weather rolls around, they can start planting. So they'll plant their soybean seeds, as I talked about, these treated pink seeds. Um, those seeds go into the soil and take up water. Once they take up water, they can use the nutrients stored in the seed to push up out of the ground. Once they push up out of the ground, they'll put out what um, are called cotyledons, which are these big, lush, green leaves. What these leaves do is take up water and sunlight and carbon dioxide and help make nutrients to make the plant grow big and strong. Once the plant gets a little bigger, they'll look more like this. So once they grow true leaves after the cotyledons, they're what they're called trifoliates. So they have three leaflets and they're kind of fuzzy. So these soybean plants will grow all summer long, taking in the sunlight and the water and the carbon dioxide and make lots of nodes. Later in the summer, um, once things start to get just a little cooler and there's a little less sunlight, at each of these nodes there will be a flower, and that's where the soybean pod starts to develop. Once the soybean pod starts to develop, the plant puts all its energy towards making the soybean seeds. That's where they store their energy, and that's what gives us energy when we eat them or when our cows eat them. Um, once it starts to cool down, the leaves will turn yellow, and they'll drop their leaves, and the pods will turn brown, and then we get our finished product, which is this cream-colored seed. So once the soybeans are dried down and harvested, they look something like this. And the farmer can then sell their soybeans to an elevator, which will ship them out to some sort of processor. At the processor, the soybeans will be crushed down uh, to produce two different products, one of which is an oil, which is high in fat, and then a meal, which is high in protein. The oil and the meal from the soybean is made into all sorts of products that we use in our everyday life. Some of the things that we have here, including flour, uh, vegetable oils, crackers, cookies, cakes, margarine, salad dressing. 
So a lot of the oil is used in things that I've mentioned, um, but the soybean meal is primarily goes towards feed, either for humans, but primarily for livestock. So a lot of the soybeans that are produced in Ohio and across the Midwest in the U.S. Um, are either used domestically or across the globe as soybean meal to feed our cows and chickens and pigs. If I had young children, which my children aren't so young anymore, I would encourage them to get into farming. I think it's a very wholesome uh, way of life. I like the, the independence, the freedom. You get to be outside every day, so if you enjoy nature and being outside and working with, working with people and working with livestock, I think it's a, it's a wonderful profession to get into. Farming and roles that support farmers like researchers, salesmen, they're a great way to interact with nature. It really connects you to the food you eat when you know where it comes from and you know um, how it's grown. You're your own manager, you're your, your own operator. It's nice to be independent and the decisions you make you have to live with. Uh, if, you, if you succeed, it's because of what you've done. Uh, if, it, if you don't succeed, it may be what you have not done. Uh, the weather plays a large part of farming and so you have to be somewhat of a risk taker. I'm a trustee of the local Farm Bureau, Pickway County. We try to promote agriculture, you know, get, you know, we obviously drop membership drives. It's important to get membership so we have support and people know what is going on with the farm community and what are the major tasks and, and, the, and the challenges we have in agriculture. Um, you know, awareness of what's going on, especially environmental, it, it's important. People need to know about that. You know, we're there to support the farm community. Pickway is like the top four or five in corn production. Um, you know, it's, it's a major part of this county. I mean, there is some industry, but ag is a major part of it. And obviously we got the pumpkin show typically every year, and that's, that, those pumpkins come from growers or who are many farmers. There's a many things you can be involved in agriculture, not just actually doing the dirt, but you can support it and, you know, sales such as myself, you know, any type of food production. There's a lot of, a lot of other things out there that you aren't directly related to farming, but you're in the agriculture business. There's many things that kids can do in agriculture beyond just actually farming. Being involved in the local Farm Bureau, you could be in many organizations that actually support agriculture in this community. We'd like to give a huge shout out to Alyssa, Dawn, and Kent for allowing us to spend the time out here on the farm with them today. And we'd like to thank all of you for joining us.